Africa is not only the cradle of humanity, she is also the birthplace of mathematics. From the Nok civilization of West Africa to the Buganda in the East, from the great Congo people of Central Africa to the Mutapa Empire in the South, Africa is home to the world's earliest form of mathematical thinking and the first known use of measuring and calculation, confirming the continent as the birthplace of both basic and advanced mathematics. Eurocentric scholars rarely mention the fact that the greatest ancient Greek philosophers and mathematicians were in fact students in Egypt. For example, Pythagoras traveled to Egypt as a young man and studied mathematics and other subjects at the temple of the god Jehuti in the city of Anu for over 20 years. Here he learned about geometry, astronomy and other subjects from the priests at the temple who were known for their advanced knowledge of mathematics and science. Pythagoras is also said to have studied with the Egyptian mathematician and philosopher Ankhmar, who is known for his work on geometry and the division of the circle into 360 degrees. Ankhmar was a contemporary of Pythagoras and lived in the 6th century BC. The Pythagoreans were known to study the geometry of shapes, which was a subject of great interest in ancient Egypt. They were also interested in the concept of the golden ratio, which was used extensively in ancient Egyptian architecture and art. Historians believe that Pythagoras' travels to Egypt and his exposure to the advanced knowledge and practices of the priests at the temple of Jehuti had a significant influence on his own philosophical and mathematical ideas. It is possible that his studies in Egypt helped shape his belief in the spiritual and mystical significance of mathematics and his views on the nature of the universe and its underlying structure. Earlier this year, I discovered an ethnomathematician author by the name Dr. Ron Aglash who wrote the book African Fractals, Modern Computing and Indigenous Design. In the book, he discusses how African architecture from Zambia to Mali consciously incorporates fractals and maps the social scaling into the geometric scaling. In his travels, he would get aerial photographs of the Americas and the South Pacific but noticed that only the African ones were fractal and with sophisticated algorithms. For example, Ethiopian crosses, Manghetu sculpture, and Angolan graphs drawn in the sand that are now called Eulerian path after the German mathematician Euler. Another example is a popular African board game known as Owari in Ghana, Mangala in East Coast and Central Africa, Bao in Kenya, and Sogo in other countries. He continues to list more examples, but the one that stood out for me was the Bamana sand divination system used all over Africa. Each of the symbols used produces a 4-bit binary word. You draw these lines in the sand randomly and then you count off. If it's an odd number, you put down one stroke. And if it's an even number, you put down two strokes. Dr. Eglesh couldn't make sense of the sacred knowledge until he was initiated as a Bamana priest. It was then revealed to him that it was a number generator using deterministic chaos. When you have four bit symbol, you put it together with another one sideways. So even plus odd gives you odd and odd plus even gives you odd. Even plus even gives you even and odd plus odd gives you even. It's just like the parity bit check on a computer. And then you take this symbol and put it back in so it's a self-generating diversity of symbols. And because it's a binary code, you can implement this in hardware. In the 12th century, Hugo of Santala brought this knowledge into Spain and they had entered into the alchemy community as geomancy, which means divination through the earth. Then a German mathematician named Leibniz talked about geomancy in his dissertation called De Combinatoria. But instead of one stroke and two strokes, 
accused a 1 and a 0. George Ball then took Leibniz's binary code and created Boolean algebra. And John von Neumann took Boolean algebra to create the digital computer. This was all made possible due to Africa's significant contribution to the mathematical sciences. And I will now share a timeline of her other breakthroughs in mathematics. Starting in South Africa with the oldest astronomical calendar in the world, known to African elders as Inzalo Yelanga, 75,000 BC. Still in South Africa, ochre rocks adorned with scratched geometric patterns found in the Blombos cave, 70,000 BC. Eswatin, the oldest mathematical instrument in the world, the Lubombo bone, 35,000 BC. Democratic Republic of Congo, the earliest known reference to prime numbers, the Ishango bone, 20,000 BC. Egypt, the earliest known decimal system, 3,100 BC. Precision surveying, 2,700 BC. The earliest reference to the binary number was found in the Heru I fraction, 2,400 BC. The Moscow Mathematical Papyrus, 1,800 BC. The Berlin Papyrus contains a quadratic equation and its solution, 1,800 BC. The Rhind Mathematical Papyrus, the first known approximate values of pi at 3.16. The first attempt at squaring the circle. The earliest known use of a sort of cotangent and knowledge of solving first-order linear equations, 1650 BC. The earliest known use of fractions and interpolation tables used to approximate the values of the other fractions, 1000 BC. Ethiopia, the oldest known evidence of a counting board game, Mangala, 700 BC. Mali, the Timbuktu mathematical manuscripts, 1200 AD. Contrary to what historians had previously claimed, the Akan people developed their own numerical system. As recently demonstrated by a French researcher, the Akan people did not adopt the Arabic and Persian numeral systems. The proof was discovered by Jean-Jacques Crepier in the Akan gold weights that were used to weigh gold powder the dominant currency of the area that is now Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire during trades with the Arabs, Portuguese, Dutch and English from the 15th to the late 19th centuries. Gold powder served as the region's primary medium of exchange. Crapier assembled a group of mathematicians and collectors to carry out the project. They calculated the masses of as many gold weights as they could get their hands on between them. In the end, the group had records for 9,301 weights from international museum and private collections. They were utilized in sophisticated ways to convert between the many currencies of the Akan's trading partners as evidenced by the distribution of their masses which demonstrated that the system was based on the weights of West African seeds, not Arab measures.